Hello comrades, I'm Comrade Mocha Lover, and thank you for rejoining me here in TNO, the last days of Europe, in which we are playing as Bratia, led by Papa Soblin. So, we've got a couple comments to get through, but let's go ahead and do our first focus for the episode, the Partisans in Aldan. Of all the nations that surround us, corrupt and the new ideologies and hostile to our intent to build towards a new worker's future, there is one that stands out in the territories of the Far East. The Free Fighters, the Partisans, the Lovers, the Natives, and the Idealists, they are all the backbone that make up Aldan. They are the refugees of a war-torn world, and in a place like this, they are a beacon much like us, except they possess no will to drive Russia and its inhabitants into a new era of prosperity instead. Rightfully so. They remain where they are and defend their homeland. How we, however, have ideas that go beyond containing the revolution. With the potential to become fast allies, we've authorized communications with Alden. May we hope that they coalesce forces with us in the eternal struggle. And if not, that's okay, because right now, we are preparing a raid against them. Uh, so the first comment um, is... Ooh, which one do I want to do? Uh, I asked yesterday, I said you guys, said you guys, I told you guys yesterday that I really want to play the Reichs Commissariats, but Sillen said that a lot of the Reichs Commissariats, like Ukraine, Muscovy, and even other ones, they don't have a lot of focus trees. If if they have focus trees, they're not very long, supposedly, so it's best to wait until they get, you know, more. I mean, they have some starter focus trees, maybe. Well, they have some down here too, but they kind of have starter ones. It's probably just best to wait, and that's my plan. I will wait, because there, there's so many other nations, so many other mods. That I need to play as. Uh, scavenge for loot. I'd like to do that. I kind of want to get over here too. But let's scavenge for loot as well first. I think that'd be good. Um, so I'm going to wait to play the Rex Commissariats eventually. I mean, I'm, I'm going to play the United States several different times. I've already played England once. I've got to play Germany again sometime. Italy once things are fixed for Italy. The French state. Maybe even Brittany because that sounds like fun. Japan. Definitely have to play Japan. I definitely want to play the Republic of China at least. Maybe even India if they get if they have enough contact. Cause India looks like it could be a really interesting country to play as. Maybe Turkey as well. There's so many different options. I want to play as Gross Central Africa someday as well. I think that'd be awesome. Real awesome. Uh, initiate raid. Yeah, we might as well. So, eventually, I want to do that. And do more Russia. I mean, Siberian Black Army. They refuse tribute. Oh, Alden. Oh, Alden. Do we even have to look? An ultimatum. Oh, the Siberian Black Army. We've already read this, so they, they want us to demand stuff from them. As, you know, I'm beating up enemies over here. So, we've got to wait a few days. So, okay, raid successful. Relics of the past. Very cool. Alright, so let's go ahead and do new equipment. Agricultural methods. Let's get new workers. Let's get... Mm, workers. Mm. Sure, why not? We need to upgrade everything eventually anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, let's see. So that, we talked about the Rex Commissariats. Uh, someone also asked, Mr. Mocha Lover, how are you able to do so many different campaigns at the same time? Because at the time of this recording, I'm uploading like five a day. Well, first of all, it helps if you don't have a job. Or an official job. We'll put it like that. An official job. Uh, I don't work under the table, I'll, I'll put it like that, but uh, it helps if you don't have steady work. Uh, secondly, I'm still a student, so that yeah you know, gives me some time. We've got nine days to do this, we'll be over there. Uh, and honestly, I like playing Hoi 4, and all the mods that are out, like, I don't try to play a mo two, one mod at the same time for two campaigns, so one mod at a time, so that kind of helps uh, me keep sane with the c campaigns and timelines. But anyways, Relics of the Past. Our recent raid on enemy territory has been a resounding success. After subduing the enemy forces on the battlefield, our brave soldiers have marched into several of the border towns, scrounged up treasures from the days of when Russia was united. Serving up as a painful reminder of our own pitiful divisions, uh, we have determined that some of these items can prove useful in developing our own fledgling industry. Instead, we hope that they can aid in our return to the same position of power that these commodities were fashioned in, and elevate these lands to a respectable and peaceful way of living once again. But we also must think of the future. We get machines or memories of the past. Very cool. And right now, since they're going to attack us, and it looks like we can need more equipment, maybe except for motorized, I'm going to go ahead and do this again. Spare some equipment. Good. Good. That definitely helped out. Wimpers of the Siberian Tiger. Oh, the Partisans Alden. We beat them up. And now they're going to give us stuff. Let's go ahead and do another focus first. Our, offer our friendship, non aggression pact, a new way home. Uh, offer some friendship. Slide trickery and deception is common, almost expected even in Russia's dark age, as such as it is. It only makes sense that the Partisans of Alden would doubt us binding, in binding relations together. That is why we must go above and beyond what is expected and send over negotiations that would sign a certain a non aggression pact with, the, with them, and that no uncertain terms should be broken, that the trust any nation or people held in our government will break down. If this goes through, it will be much, that much easier to bring yourselves closer to another light in the East. Yes. Oh, we got, we got a week left. We're getting there. We, got, we have to have time to entrench ourselves, so that'll be good. Wimpers of the Siberian Tiger. Sablin sat, drinking tea with Braun, Pichuro, and Makiv, as they listened to the report of Ulanashika. I, I butcher her name a lot. Or his name. I recently returned from her harsh journey, okay? 
through the taiga to visit the long-suffering partisans of Alden. Very little food, great war-era guns, constant border raids by bandits. Most of all, comrades, these people are tired. Few are very are under 30. Most are simply peasants who wish to return to their old lands in the desperate hope that their families are still alive. Will they support a revolution? asked Braun, sipping his tea as he looked over the brim of his glasses. Southern frowned, but he had to admit, Braun was nothing less, was nothing if not pragmatic. Among those who remember the time before endless chaos and privation, privation, Provision. There are those who keep the dream of Lenin and Marx alive, replied Ulanovskaya. After speaking with Okrov and his council, they seem wretchedly eager to offer control of their land in exchange for food protection and the right to return home. It was moving. Comrades, these people need our help more than any other. I agree with comrade you, said Machiv, unusually dour. Many of the partisans are brats with family here. Aside from the righteousness of aiding the downtrodden, we'll gain a tactical advantage by observing the land and perhaps some additional sorely needed manpower. Braun placed down his teacup with an audible click. I concur. The benefits far await the potential risks, and we need any advantage we can get. Bichur nodded her approval, looking over with an ever so slightly raised eyebrow at Sablin. Returning the raised eyebrow, Sablin turned to smile at Yolanovskaya. I wholeheartedly agree with supporting the Alden partisans. It's a favorable deal, and besides anything else, it is our manifest duty to aid the poor and the oppressed folk of Russia. Southern raises teacup in a mock salute, Alden, and then the rest of Russia, all brothers and sisters under socialism. Hey, political power, great. All right, so looks like we have pretty much gotten here. Uh, oh, the machines of the past, we'll read that too. We've got four days left until I, we have to make a decision. So after crushing our foe, our men had charged into the enemy's warehouses and armories, snatching everything of use and destroying the rest that could not be carried. A group of our soldiers stumbled into a storage facility housing great industrial equipment. It would only be fitting to strap the machine to the back of our vehicles and haul them to our factories, where they can be appropriated and integrated into our production lines. Perhaps one day, with one machine at a time, we can rebuild Russia from the ground and restore her to her former glory. To stability and a civilian factory. Nice. Not bad. That's actually pretty good. All right, guys. Keep getting entrenched. Oh, nice. Not bad. Not bad. We got two days, and now we must make a decision. Here we go. Scavenge for loot. Train new workers. Good. Uh, we probably want to secure control for more stability, but let's go in. We will not back down so easily. And now they're attacking us. Now, they are using light infantry here, and... Oh, they only have light infantry? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's not going to be too bad, then. That's not going to be too bad. Hopefully. I hope so. Oh, do we have some things we can do here, maybe? Maybe, maybe not? Oh, yeah, let's go ahead and do Dreams of Freedom. So we can do Social Economics Reform Stage 2. More political power, monthly population, less consumer goods, more research speed, better trade deal opinions, and construct things better, or get more... Defense, recovery rate, supply consumption, recruitable population factor. We're going to go with Socialist Economy Reform 2, because even though we lose political power for 60 days, 2 months, we get even more political power by the end of it, so that's actually really, really, really worth it in my opinion. Quite worth it. And I do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice warm, and for me to keep hydrated. Cool! The enemy is defeated. We got some guns, early infantry rifles, stability, and political power. That's what I thought, you pieces of garbage. Honestly, they have 4 divisions in total. Uh, we're not really that strong. I was thinking about maybe attacking them as well, but... I'm not sure that'd be really uh, worth it. Uh, Mahiv? Boris. I'm not sure why it always switches things up for us. Oh, wait, we got 26. Okay, so let's do army reforms at the same time then. We're going to lose quite a bit of political power, probably. Minus 0 0.08. Not bad. Um, and then, you know what? That's not really too much of an issue for us. I mean, that's actually really good for us. They were able to get through all this really quickly. Because you had to get through both reforms. Before we're supposed to do the Congress, which is actually quite a ways away, so we are a little ahead of schedule, I would say. Death of Prime Minister Plek Fibon Songkram. Well, too bad for him. Unfortunate, man. Unfortunate. Form the Far Eastern. Uh, ooh, we're not going to be able to form that a Soviet Republic yet. Going to need some time, though. Going to need some time. And I'll probably do secure control once we get enough political power, because we could use more weekly stability. Offer our friendship, and then we shall have a way home. What can we make of friendship if there are guards patrolling the border? If a man from Alden wishes to come to home to Bratia. Oh, crap. Pushing, punishing him for wishing to go back. This lack of clemency means there's no relationship built on closed offenses and rifles point at each other, at each other's side, which will not last. And we must seek to resolve it as soon as possible. With proper negotiation, we will make sure that, that every man, woman, and child will move through safely, unhindered in their passage, and comfortable in the knowledge that they are welcomed in our lands just as much as they are in Alden. Good. So, Chita, you have finally shown yourself. You know what? I'm glad I did not put anything hard place. I'm not justifying against anybody. Ultimatum. We must be smart. Let them into our territory and then crush them violently. And even though we're not full strength, we're still not doing too bad. So, still plenty motorized. We just need more stuff. Oh, it's terrible. I know. But maybe if we can get Alden under us, things will look up. And besides, we're, we're literally transforming our economy right now to become more of a Leninist, a socialist, economic, and army country. Uh, point of time, Minister of Thailand. Cool. We dream of our own Thailand. Well, yeah, we dream of our own Russia. Let's see what happens. Oh, I paused the game. Whoops. Well, not really whoops. 
It was intended. You guys are doing pretty well. Make sure they got just enough organization. Cool. We will not back down so easily. Go shock yourself. They tried this before, in which we were, we might have struggled quite a bit last time. But with our soldiers moving up, hopefully we can do well. Yeah, let's hope they can do well. I'm... Oh, I can't give you more defense. Okay, guys. Keep moving. Move, 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 move. Oh. What happened? What happened? Oh, boy. Something's going on. Please don't crash. I'll be right back. All right. Sorry about that. I For some reason, the game was just chugging along, trying to figure out what was going on. I'm not really sure what happened there. Um, I mean, it is what it is, but still, not really sure. Uh, let's get you back here. That'd be good. Yeah, I don't know why. We don't have any... We didn't win the battle. We didn't lose the battle. Ah, oh, I see what happened. Things got really awkward here. Ah, oh, new way home. Good. Very good. They Someone declared war on them, so that's good for us. Thank you. So that's why they stopped. The Moor is fighting around. Comrades in arms, though. Glorious days. The people of Alden have shown strong support for these measures, so much so that there have even been rallying cries that our two nations should unite. Having overlooked the situation at hand, we have seen no reason not to go ahead with the proceedings. Our government shall henceforth petition the Alden government and the proposal to bind our nations into one. If they accept, then there will be one more set of peoples joining us in the quest for liberation. The Barat, uh, autonomous Soviet socialist republic, shall expand its reach and another territory, free and equal, shall join the fray. A truly tremendous idea, my friends. Cheetah, cheetah. Do it again, I dare. Oh, actually, can we prepare a raid? Oh, we have an honor back with them. So we're in Black Army, and then... Oh, actually, how about down here? It actually might not be a bad thing to do if you do it down here. Maybe it could work? They do have radar, so that does definitely help them out. So, we'll see what happens. Come on, comrades in arms. Liberty. A more... Oh, actually, a more starting two-front war. Oh, maybe they'll kill off Cheetah. That wouldn't be bad if they did that. Hopefully, we have enough divisions, or... We won't have enough divisions. We'll have strong enough divisions. Because my goal isn't a massive army, but a very, very strong, well-equipped army. Because even though I didn't realize we were using elite infantry last time, which we are still, still not bad. Oh, there goes one of the Madagascars. Cool. We have the regular Madagascar, and we have the Jewish Madagascar. God, I want to play as this nation so badly. But they're not ready yet. They're just not ready yet. Comrades in arms, great! Uh, reunite the family stability, which would be very good. Oh, equipment. Oh my god, we can get equipment. Integrate the armies. That's not bad either. Oh, wait. Every le leader joins us. So, re reunite the families. Finally, we are two nations acting as one. We will prosper all the more for it. However, some voices echo throughout echo the thought that we should do more than just bring them in. Looting, plundering, raiding, they all torn apart marriages, children from parents, and communities that remain divided. We will not only accept the partisans of Alden, we will guide them to their homes, reunite them with their loved ones, and heal the many wounds that have been prolonged ne needlessly for all the decades past. Beautiful, my friends. Uh, let's see. We don't have him under us yet, but we're working on it. Oh. Oh, oh hold on. We almost got him. Homeward bound. Southern watch as a mist of his breath froze into tiny crystals of ice that fell, glimmering in silence to the crisp patched snow. Native Siberians called it the Whispers of Stars. Shivering alongside him, despite their heavy fur coats with the rest of the Central Committee. Those morning, the mists rising off the forest blur the sun, giving the impression that they were looking at everything throughout or through a frosted window. They seem to coalesce us out of the mist. A legion of phantoms slogging through the snow in their tattered uniforms. The southern's eyes of partisans of Alden seem to like tortured specters of the past. Once valiant warriors who have been denied their eternal rest and now roam the land, forever trapped in the mortal realm. They stared back, eyes guttered and dim, carrying guns held together by a little more than faith, squinting in the dawn as though accustomed, unaccustomed to going about in the light of the day. Southern's heart wrenched to see their horses trudge, huffing in the, through the snow, ribs poking from their skins. In these quiet struggles, they seemed to form the image of the rider's long years of torment and deprivation. Deprivation. He saw the blood and sweat of the painful decades looking behind the guttered gazes of men and beasts. Saluting as he appeared out of the fog, Gurzap Olchirov rode before Southern and dismounted. Though he was as gaunt as his men, his eyes still burned with love for freedom and the revolution. Gripping his arm in greeting, Southern could tell that this was a man who soon would sooner die than give up the fight. After all, it was a simple matter of signing the treaty. The revolution's troops moved north into Alden, as the partisans were friendly freed from their long years of penury and anguish. As they marched into the south to return to their homes and families, Southern saw their eyes shine lambent, with that long dallas flame of pure, simple joy. Every traveler learns to appreciate home more from his wandering, which is great. I'm sorry that we beat the living crap out of you several times earlier. Somewhat sorry, but it had to be done for the good of the revolution. Oh, actually, how strong are these guys? I want to say we could try to fight them. I don't want to hurt our chances. You know what? Oh. Oh, you guys are getting attacked. Good. I'm not going to do this yet. I want to do the focus that gives us equipment first, and then I'll try it. I want to make sure that when we do this, we have the best possible outcomes. 
that is probably the best thing we can think about right now. And we still need to integrate this, which will be good. We get that as a core. We get resources. We get maybe a factory, maybe. Uh, they are currently Yakut culture, even though we are eh, Russian, pretty much. And Buryat, or really Buryat. We got some Russian in here, too, which is fine, which is great. I love it. Repair rate against Olamon. Ooh, wait, what? Um, prepare rate against... Huh. Well, I don't... Oh, wait, against the capitalists. Oh, a lot of people don't have to exist first. We have that. We have that. We have that and that. So this is pretty much done for now. We're going to keep it open, though. Dreams of reunifying Russia. Um... Oh, there it is. Oh, look. Hmm. What's wrong with you guys? This is the one that become, can become, like, a divine mandate of Russia. Holy duty. How strong are they? They have a thousand man... Mm hmm Oh, yeah. If they have no divisions, what am I to do? Yeah, why not? Have a good time, you know. Half these guys are inexperienced, but whatever. It is what it is. Cheetah's actually striking back. Of course, Magadon. Magadon is doing pretty well against them, too. I can't wait till we get out of our warlord status so we can do economy stuff. Reunite the families, my friends. Let's go ahead and salvage the equipment. In the East, industrial capacity is something that every nation creates. Output weapons capable of defending themselves, and in some cases, using them for purposes of expansion. It is what makes or breaks a community, whether it lives or dies in the plains, forests, and frozen over mountains in Siberia. With the integration of Alden, however, we've gained access to their unused armories, stockpiled with outdated but very useful equipment. With these, we will make sure that the unification of Russia is accelerated. Absolutely. For the love of God, that is awesome. Uh, 0.65 political power day. A great thing, my friends. A truly great thing. Oh, what's going on? Someone dying? Please don't crash. Gods of that. Oh, nothing but nonsense. Oh, of course. Yeah, and here's the divine mandate of Siberia. Oh, look at that. That I have to. I'm going to play as this nation someday. I don't know when. I really want to play as this nation. This looks. Oh crap! Now they divisions. Oh crap! Oh no no no! Um, the North Wiccans, amidst the endless war for the Russian Far East, few men have been bothered to pay attention to the frigid lands of the North. We got a few abandoned mining towns, isolated Ch Chukchi villages, and wandering nomads. The area was assumed to be more or less abandoned. A few madmen were occasionally to find their way up there, attempting to establish their own empire in the cold, but the land barely refused to be tamed. This state of anarchy has now ended. It began with the hymns. Actually, actually I really like hymns. Travelers brought about tales of entire villages united in prayer, singing songs of hope and peace in the name of the Lord. This hardly seems unusual. Russia has been a godly land even through the days of the Union. But when many travelers all began speaking the same tales coming from so many different villages, our leaders began to suspect that there was something amiss. Now we know why. An emissary has come or arrived in our midst of a now united north. He came only to deliver a message, a message of judgment delivered from his master, the so-called Fatherman. This father has proclaimed that the entirety of the North to belong to the single union in the name of God, declaring that we have, he has committed grievous sin and besmirched the lands of Holy Russia. He has vowed to lead his walk of faithful against us and deliver us into two things, divine wrath and divine salvation. We had hoped that this, this was some trick, but already our scouts are reporting movement on the northern borders. The North is indeed coming, their hymns grow louder and louder by the day. We must ready our forces to meet this army of zealots head on. It would seem, however, that there are some among us who would rather lead this place and pleasure life in the name of the Mad Crusade. Prepare for the new threat. May God welcome this wayward soul. Country changes to... Seven. Oh, wait, we can become them. That I wanted to click on this, but we've got to prepare for this new threat. And I didn't realize that we would be going to war. Or they refuse tribute. Oh, crap. Yeah, um, I don't think they... They literally just spawn divisions there. So, I'm going to assume they're going to come from Alamon. So, yeah. Uh, 63, industry. Three repairs, okay. Resources, we could probably... Let's go grab that. Just because we could use maybe a thing of fuel, maybe just a slightly more fuel, maybe a thing of rubber just in case for the future. Military construction, very good. Let's go and do some land doctrine. Um, combined operations. Strategic theorem. This is the one that's always difficult to do. We have no tanks, and I kind of actually plan on using tanks eventually. But it's going to be a while. It's definitely going to be a while. I think we might get better if we just focus on infantry. Recovery rate, organization, recovery rate, defense. Uh, this middle one, yeah, it's okay. Strategic theorem. Offensive strategy. Which is okay. Soft attack plus 15% is a no laughing matter. More defense and organization. More defense and organization. Not bad. Eh, eh. Infantry, you get more organization. I want breakthrough. That's what I'm looking for. 10% breakthrough right there, and you can get both of these. That's not bad. But how about this one? Combine operations, defense, soft attack, ground support, organization. Uh, these are not mutually exclusive, which is actually really good to see. Uh, organization recovery rate, you can do this one or this the other one. Air assault, eh, looks okay, naval support. Um, did we not see any breakthrough at all? I gotta get at least a little bit of breakthrough. Yeah, I don't see any breakthrough, oh my goodness. Uh-huh. 
I mean, this does support use support companies, which I really like. I love support companies so much. Yeah, I probably won't go that way. I'll probably go with air support because we will get planes. I promise we will get planes. Honestly, this doesn't seem like great. I'm gonna go with strategic theorem because we're not gonna have that many planes. I'm not gonna use uh, air assault recovery stuff or helicopters. I'm not gonna use marines either. So we'll go to strategic theorem. Get more entrenchment. That that just I think that'd be for the best. Please, no one show up. Please, no one show up. Uh, we get scavenger loot, but we gotta integrate all of them first. I mean, I love winning the battle. How long is it gonna last? Please, no one show up. Please, no one show up. Actually, do, are we stuck here? If it are they stuck if they don't win the battle? Oh god, come on, don't lag, don't lag, don't crash. Okay. Whenever, whenever uh, it does that, I always see like the spinning windows mouse symbol. I'm like, oh god, no. Oh god, no. Oh god, no. Seriously, are we gonna? Okay, raid is successful. We didn't find him. Great. We get. Uh, I think I'm a Bob. Love it. And we have five army XP. Nice. Salvage the equipment. And integrate their armies. War is a bloody and violent thing. It ruins the minds of men, leaving them as ghosts and shells. Yet it is a cruel and necessary evil that is known in much of the world. For pieces of rarity and truces are cherished. Many of Alden's partisans are older men, willing to settle down and never pick up a rifle again. For that, the services are respected and the wishes obliged. But there will always be remaining those who will who want to serve. To carry good into battle, these younger men are filled with fervor. The revolution they believe will be carried out with bolts and blood. They are unfortunately not wrong, and so their services will be put to use. Every single one of these men that serves the ASSR carry the dreams and ideals of a world untarnished by violence, but they must raise hell before we can, the column can arrive. Manpower, army XP. We get leaders. Love it. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Uh, food for the hungry. Great. Guess we're not going hungry tonight. We've got political power, stability, and war support. Uh, and we can integrate Alan and scavenge for more loot. And we can get new schools for the children. We're doing this for the children, my friends. Yakutia. Are you still fighting these guys? Um, they're fighting. Oh, oh, they're not, they're all the way over there, huh? Well, okay. Who are you, Mahiv? Oh, Mahiv. Hello. I look a little Asian, I guess. Which makes which makes perfect sense. Don't get me wrong. That makes absolutely perfect sense. Just because this is this is literally Asia, the continent of Asia. So, cheetah, cheetah, cheetah. We're still trying to build stuff up, which is fine, more than fine. Integrate the armies. A Leninist army stage two. I love Leninism. Love it as well as the economy part about it. Ugh, beautiful thing. Slightly higher GDP. Thank you. GDP re growth rate is three point and we have no budget and no deficits, no debt. We're slowly improving infantry equipment, or uh, support equipment, I mean. Slowly improving this as well. And once we core it, it'll be fine. Howitzer's not bad. This cup of coffee is kind of warm. I'm putting it on my face right now. Just saying. Um, Let's see. Attack the capitalists. Is the, which, oh, this is Yakutia. Are they, I guess they're capitalists over here. Huh. Okay, cool. Let them all kill each other. And the social spirit. The socialists of oppressed nations must, in their turn, earn. Unfailingly fight for the complete, including organizational unity of the workers of the oppressed and oppressing nationalities from Lenin. However, a revolution is impossible. The workers are not yet uh, are not like chains. Their links interlocking with each other. Yet every link as strong as steel. If we can follow such a policy, the people of Alden will be united with us in our want, need, and demand for a better world. If the goals align with ours, they will find it easier to integrate themselves within the new markings of our society, and in turn, will set a precedent for those who join the ASSR henceforth. Slightly decreased scoring time. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. Baratia. I love Baratia. Oh, crap. Tomsk is looking big, but that's okay. Uh, creation of the Iberian Council. This is in progress. Yeah, Tomsk just looks big. I mean, there might be a, actually a very, very powerful nation, but... Dimit... Hold on! I'm sorry. I'm a, like, I'm a musician. Shostakovich. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Oh, what the heck? Now I've got to play Tomsk. How, let me, how do I get Shostakovich? I love Shostakovich. I love his music. Oh, my goodness. Please, can I got it? He's a social democrat or something. Oh my goodness. Oh, I can't remember one of the some of his tunes off the top of my head. So he's a, he's a social democrat, is he? Social democracy. Oh my goodness. Shostakovich. Of course he'd be in the mod. Of course he would. Oh, and Hitler's dead. Who cares? I much prefer Shostakovich. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's been a while since I've listened to his music. Music though. Oh my goodness. Please. I can't remember. The, I, I remember how the tune goes. I, I don't remember 
the one of the pieces he had. Uh, the Far Eastern Repu War. With a wall of bitter and unsatisfying peace reigned in the East, things have suddenly shifted so suddenly and so quickly. From the rise of the mysterious Alexander Men in the North to the bloody conflict that has resulted in a unification of the Hardman Three in the East, two sudden issues begin to plague us. With renewed focuses on both sides, we have to fo make our moves very carefully, lest the torch of our revolution is extinguished. Our soldiers will ready the rifles, steal their minds, and prepare themselves for war once more. Yes, ten percent more uh, war support. Great. Oh, um, uh, humanist association, build our government, overtures to the people, uh, direct representation. Overtures. I, I doubt they would have the actual name of some of his pieces on here. Oh my goodness. Mmm. I can't remember the name of the piece. Humanist popularity, huh? All Russian stuff. Oh, it's lagging again. Oh god, please, please don't crash. Oh, I see the window symbol. Oh no. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, okay. oh it's just a German Civil War. Okay, that's fine. It is thus necessary that the individual should finally come to the realization that his ego is of no importance in comparison to the existence of the nation. Ah. Well, look, oh my god. Okay, so, yeah, okay, Tomsk has just shot up to this, the list of when I play Russia again. I I have to play as I'm sorry. I, as a musician, I have to. Hmm. Oh, uh, we can do this stuff. We can get more stability. Uh, chaos and Austin. All right, divided. That's pretty normal. Let's get up some more stability first for now. I usually don't choose too much of that stuff, but that's okay with me. Cost disappeared. Disappearance caused Muscovine turmoil. Bardigan is going to war. England is about, probably about to hit a civil war as well, if they're not already. Which doesn't look like they are. Oh, Muscovy. Oh, God. It's lagging harder. My apologies. You know, there's nothing I can really do about this. It's just a game. Moscow autonomy. Hanspar assumes control of Germania. Makes sense. Franco-Burgundian war. God, I love I love that. Himmler. There we go. Ah, that's not too bad. That's actually a little bit more balanced, it looks like. Because sometimes you see that one side is, like, really, really powerful. That's actually terrifying. Actually... Mm, is that the resistance? Yeah. The resistance look like they're pretty weak there. I'm not gonna lie, they're pretty weak. The far eastern no, wall. Oh, oh, and lots of more stuff down here. Cool. Well, the man of God. Let's do tragedy and farce in exile. The Harbin Three was a curious but ultimately disgusting situation. In the aftermath of the chaos that swarmed Russia, they made their homes in the east, their ideologies festering and corrupting. Mikhail II of Chita, a self-proclaimed Tsar, the deathly, deathly enemy that Lenin decided to fought against in the Great October Revolution. The state of Tsardom returned, biding its time to throw Russia back into the past. Mikhail Matovsky of Magadan, a ridiculous idea to make the idea of fascism in all its blood-soaked glory, something that the people of Russia would be willing to adopt. Only folly follows in Matovsky's wake. And Konstantin Radzevsky of Amur, nothing but a bandit, a scoundrel, a murderer, and following in insanity's footsteps. The madness of National Socialism had infested his mind with the so-called Vaz, representing everything that Russia is to fight and annihilate this world from this world. Now the victor of these three stands tall, ready to be torn down against all tyranny. Shostakovich, Shostakovich, yes, 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 yes. Sorry, I, I'm, I, I'm weird, I know I'm weird. But the sins of our roots. Sin cometh not from the front, font of darkness, shadow, and abomination in the world any longer, rather. Sin works in its in disguise, beguiling men uh, through attraction and lust to bring them more closely to the realm of Gehenna. Yes, I love lust. Lust, lust, lust away. Yes, the very valley of Hinnom fills this earth with the great moneylender, the bandit, and the embezzler, as a father so greatly marches into the depths of one such pit of sin. So and father, then brother, and the fraternal militia of our faith followed the father into such a place that day. Worried from the travels, yet never more, wishing for the corruption of de decadence to strike the heart of our home again. Thus what needed to be done was ordered forth by our father. The money lenders' banks were forced to close, uh, shutting up the serpent of the sin. The bandit was arrested that day to be tried on order of the violations of the Holy Scripture. And the embezzler, how greatly he, he did, he plead as he was brought away from his wretched place of sloth and greed. However, as the crackling of gunfire began, so greatly did the fraternal... Uh, return hostilities, setting forth our father into a fit of remorse as the soldiers so greatly went forth, bringing the burning judgment of the Lord down. And thus, in accordance with the will of the Lord, so too did the village burn that day, so that the holy fires may cleanse this land from pure putridity and sin. However, as soldiers, the judges of mankind under one holy God, cried out in praise and victory, so greatly did the, our father fall to his knees as the night sky adorned his cloak with the flakes of heavy frost. And so it was then that he wept. The Lord's word, that is what we serve. And he hidden heroes. Well, it is what it is. Oh, did our economy shrink a little bit? It looks like it did. Maybe? Maybe not. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Hey, six factories. Formation of the Africa Shield. Very good. Uh, Bogand has done very well against uh, the French state. Hopefully Himmler loses or we're going to end up having a very short campaign. And Offsan is having a bad, bad pass. Gamers rise up. Very cool. Donuts. He's got to be old at this point, man. he got to be old. All right. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and do this and ruin my division. And by ruin it, uh, which is better? You get more, slightly more soft attack. You get slightly more heart attack. You get actually slightly less defense, but you do get slightly more breakthrough. You get more organization. You get slightly more recovery rate. 
it, there's almost no difference, so we're gonna do that. And they're not considered elite, like super elites, so. Like I said, I'd rather have the best army, a small but extremely well equipped strong army, than have that. Than, you know, have a massive, small, tiny force. South African War, the end of Reichs Commissariat Norwegian. No one starts a war, rather, no one in a sense ought to do so. Oh, hello. Oh, uh, without first being clear in his mind about what he achieves by that war and how he tends to conduct it from war. Cool. We, we were soldiers once. Cool. Uh, well, looks like we got some enemies over here to deal with. Very good. That's fine with me. You know what? Bring it on! We will not back down so easily. We must get over here and improve ourselves as best as possible. How many divisions do they have? One, two? Yeah. Well, maybe we need to lower ourselves. Or lower this. I mean, our GDP. It is what it is. Please don't crash. Please don't crash. Okay, good. So they have fraternal militias. That's not bad. Dare the army XP. Alexander Men. I guess he likes dudes, huh? 9,000 manpower. Africa Shield. Great. Alright, so how much longer do we have with this? Prepare raid against Saka. Who's Saka? Seven days. Saka, who are you? Saka? Saka? I don't see Saka. Saka Republic. Seriously, who the heck is Saka? Sakaka Kaka is down there. Um, hmm. Hmm. Main Jiang. I don't know. All right. Let's see what happens. Oh, we have five days left. That's fine. You guys get a little more organization. Four, three. We will not back down so easily. Oh crap, what happened? Okay, well, okay, we, we went to the board war, that's fine with me. Yeah, we're defending it over, but they have motorized, which is not good. They might actually have a little bit of armor on the motorized, I'm not really sure, but whatever. Cool, uh, go home. There you go. And the schemes, more recovery rate. Free state of Magadan against them. Oh, we go to war with Magadan. Oh, we go to war with Cheetah. Um, I guess, hold on. Uh, if I take these guys out, we only have one war. It might be best to take out Cheetah and then go to war with Magadan. Let's do that one first. Uh, anything here? It, oh, yeah, Sokka, whatever. All right, so Cheetah first. Dethrone the Tsar. If the October Revolution taught Sal than anything, it was that monarchism was an erratic, dangerous, and violent force, more than willing to bog down its people in backwards ideas and self-destructive behavior. He knows that the contradiction held within Cheetah would eventually lead to his downfall, but the revolution refuses to wait for the time to take its toll on the deserving. Those who seek to remain stuck in ideologies desperate attempting to escape their fate in the sands of time deserve nothing more than to be relics of the past. Onwards, my friends. Plus point four two a day, and we get all against... All turn it. Salvin mounted the hastily constructed stage in the square outside the opera house to address the supporters. We could turn out and the thousands to hear him speak. Walking carefully, half afraid that the platform would collapse, Salvin approached the microphone, joining the central committee. After tapping the microphone twice to be sure it was working, he began. Comrades, he boomed over the plaza. Our revolution has triumphed over its first adversary, the despot Yagoda. Thunderous cheers erupted from the crowd, their clouded breath forming a new la low layer of mist in the cold of the morning. Smiling, Salvin continued, but our mission is not yet done. So, Russia lies broken and divided. Her mission, her corpse, picked over by the Tsarists, the revisionists, and the fascists. It is the manifest destiny, or duty, of a revolution to liberate the oppressed peoples of Russia. To build a new nation faithful to the immortals of science of Lenin and Marx. We will not rest until Russia is united by the social revolution from the Baltic to the Pacific. Well, we'll see how far we get. He was forced to pause here as a cacophonous approval of the crowd would have drowned out anything he said. As the cheering died down, he continued. For those who are downtrodden, we bring hope. For those who believe in a brighter future, we, deliver, we bring deliverance. For the enemies of the people, we bring nothing but defeat. We stand against all tyranny. Comrades, we march to the east to bring liberation, to cast down the tyrants. Long live Marx, Lenin, and the Socialist Revolution. Greeting from ear to ear, ear Salvin raised his fist, driving the crowd that, with revolutionary fervor. That evening, they would begin the march east. He could already taste the sweetness, the sweetness, the sweetness of victory. No kings, no tyrants, no every man not a king. Every man not a king. You heard it right here. And so far, it seems like we're winning even just one one v one, which is nice. Of course, that's why you don't want to attack. Uh, cool. Siberian Black Army, you doing okay? You guys are doing okay right there. In the western part, it doesn't seem like anyone's really trying too hard to kill each other off yet. Give it time, and they definitely will. But uh, yeah. Oh, actually. Oh. Okay. The divine mandate of Siberia declared war. The Pacific Fleet, which is come out this one. This is this is the Pacific Fleet. Yeah. So that's interesting. They canceled their attack. Which is fine with me, since uh, we have a little bit of an issue over here. Oh, we have Octorio. Not bad, but he's not as good as Baldinov. Baldinov. Hopefully we can take what we need from Cheetah. At least get Cheetah itself. 
That'd be nice. Let's get Cheetah or... Oh, there's a few of these provinces that'd be very good. And they've already, these guys have already been weakening themselves a lot more, which is really nice. Fascist. Matkovsky. Matkovsky. Uh, there's so many nations I want to play as. San Marco A. But he's got... Oh, he can't do his focus. Altering the deal. He has to be at peace. Okay. Oh, he's already... Oh, okay. Okay, well, whatever. Very nice. Very nice. Not bad. We actually... Have, mm, we're doing okay. And we basically just got to war with them. Dethrone the Tsar. Very good. And, well... I'd say just go ahead when you can. The Welsh Revolution, somewhat free, definitely Wales, and certainly an army. Uh, I wish we would have waited on that just a little bit. The Welsh Revolution. Oh, something else happened too. That's not good. But at least we're getting more political power now, so we can get out of our deficit here. That's good. 1.38 a day, not so bad. Come on, move, 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 move. What the heck are you doing, son? We don't want them to come into our territory. We gotta crush them. Did they hold? Yes, they did hold. That's good. Oh my goodness, this is not good. Oh my goodness, why, 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 why? Come on guys, move those chubby little legs. I know this infrastructure here probably isn't great, but that's okay. A lot of lag in this episode, woo! Come on. Oh, who's that? Looks like, huh, Algerian War, okay. Something that really just does not concern us at all. Get down there before they can keep expanding. God dang it, get down there! Oh, there's a Jewish resistance group? That's kind of cool. Going to Germany. Actually, how's Hadrius doing? Hadrius is... He's holding on. That is... Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they abandoned the line. The government prevails in the English Civil War. Uh, yeah, no, take him out. You should be able to take him out. 2v1. Yeah. Oh, what's going on here? Let's go, scavenge for loot. And we can also get more stability, probably, if we really wanted to. Oh, uh, no, we're already doing that. We can lower our stability. No, we're not going to do that. Scavenge for more loot. We have one loot. I love loot. Well, if they want to kill their own division off, I mean... C'est la vie. It is what it is. Keep them there for now. As, as long as we move in there, uh, we'll, we'll do okay. And, okay, now you can stop. Once we take this tile, that'll be good. Let's hold on for now. Actually, you know what? You can just up attack. It's fine with me for now. Come on. We're not that strong, but neither are they. Strategic theorem, that's good for entrenchment. It's going to grab defensive. Uh, less supply consumption. I like that. Less supply consumption, but more defense, more organization. Just max out defense. That'd be really good. Attrition planning. It's going to do that. We're planning. Keep that political power for now, it's fine. We lost this battle up here, that's fine, whatever. As long as we can get to Cheetah, that actually might be the better goal for now. Great, kill them off. Completely surrounded, that is great. Get down to Cheetah. Take whatever we can before these guys do. Before they move in there, that's good. Ah, uh, good. Good. They're going to slowly run out of strength, slowly run out of supplies. Cool, Austin is on fire, which is a good thing. They won't take our factories, but... Good luck. Man, our guys walk, our guys walk very slow. Well, that's probably because of infrastructure and forests and stuff like that. Hey, look, they're tracking, tracking us. Nice, very nice. Good. Uh, what's a war score? So we lost 3,000, they've lost 25,000. Wow. Only 5,000 against us, and we have only 14%. That's not good. Oh, come on, man. What you doing there, son? Oh, wait, what? No, you go there. What the heck? No. We could help attack that tile, but let's cut these guys off first. And get over there for, at the very least. There we go. Now we're not attacking over the river, which is a good thing. Oh, crap. They're trying to attack... Oh, crap. No, 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 no. You gotta stop these guys over here. That is not ideal. I think a specific fleet. What's going on over here? Uh, let's see. Research facilities, new workers. What are we not doing right now? Uh, research... Oh, I'll do research facilities. That's fine. Warlord development. Political campaigning. Focus on research. Nah. Infrastructure. 
You get one more infrastructure. Eh, eh. Lower stability for more weekly horsepower. That's not bad, but eh. Just take out Cheeto. Come on, before they kill us off. <laughs> Ah, oh, the airbase captured. After a particularly bloody siege, your men have captured uh, the sea airbase from the cowardly enemy and pillaged the facilities of any retrievable plunder. The most with, the, with most of the airbase left intact out of the siege, we find that the field may be put in its purpose sooner rather than later. The aircraft that sits in the hangars sunk, sulk, the middle wings still and unused. Now, with an entire airbase under our control, the territories can now support the squadrons of planes staring across the, the ashen Siberian skies. With the airfield as an asset in our favor, our men may advance through the Siberian wastes, knowing full well that the pilots could watch over them in the skies. The east is cold and the winds are colder, but no such show could render our determination to clash and to fly. The skies are ours. Great! Truly tremendous. And, oh, wow. That actually gave us a lot more territory than I thought they would. Did Magadan get anything out of this? Holy crap. But we must continue with Shatter the Crown and the Schemes. For all that Matkovsky is, he has managed to build a farce of a Russian nation based on the principles of fascism, and we managed, and he has managed to not have it collapse immediately. While he is capable and clever, he is dangerous and capable of undermining the revolution. It will all be for not, however. Our armies will be quick on the prowl, and we will stuff the condo out of fascism before it blazes into an inferno, threatening to drag the people of Russia into a reactionary hell. Very good. All right, let's go ahead and uh, integrate Cheetah. Uh, oh, oh, this is one big old state. Okay, so then we got... Oh, that's nice. Oh, to hell with Magadan, you know. Oh, we could raid against these guys again, but we're not going to. That's fine with us. Uh, raid, political campaign. Nah, we good. Can only get 0.31 a day. Still not much. Reunification of Russia. We're working on it. We're getting there. We definitely need... Hey, look at our GDP, though. 147 million? Not bad. Not quite a billion. A little more than a tenth of a billion. But it's not bad. Not bad. Uh, do we get any supplies from them? Any... No? Okay. Okay, then. Uh, West Rev... Oh, that's in the east. That's fine. Oh, their divisions are not bad. Oh, they actually have some engineers, too. They are much better stocked than we are. But once we get this core, that'd be good. External investments. And the scheme's good. Cool. If we can move in, we will. But let's do the Shadow of the Crown. After the defeating the forces of Cheetah, Mikhail II was brought into question extensively. During the time, we found out that a strange and cruel fact. He was a charismatic figure, certainly, but with his role more elusive than we initially thought. With this nation ruined, Mikhail confesses a great many things. Mikhail II actually named Michael Andreevich as a descendant of the Romanovs. However, we have found out that before his time in Cheetah, he lived in Australia and was effectively kidnapped and sent to play the role of King of the East. While he was put in an untenable and awful situation, he still represents a threat to Russian sovereignty. There will be no, there'll be no trial for Mikhail Andreevich. He will simply be sent to his home and thus never again allowed to return. Not that he seemed to be wholly against the idea. Cool. What do we have here? Uh, war planning. Focus on research. Oh, yeah. Well, then. Where are my divisions? We could try to attack here. I'm going to wait to get all the divisions on the line first. I think that would be for the best. I really think that would be for the best. Guys, they take a while to get here, and it gives us time to get through a couple other things first, too. And besides, integrating this would be... it takes time. And once we integrate it, we'll need less guns. We'll, get to, we'll actually get quite a few factories. Look at that. 7 out of 25 factories unlocked. Yes, please. Pierre Poujad elected as President of France. Very cool. Get some guns. Once those things are done, basic anti tank, basic artillery. All this good stuff. And besides, we are, we're really good on defense. Like, with our land auction. Mm, more entrenchment. Yes, please. Come on, move those chubby little legs. I really want to attack here, though. Uh, I'm going to tell you... You guys keep going there. That's fine. Get up here, though. Because we got to push this way. Shatter the crown, my friends. And this gives actually a really cool event. Talking about Mikhail there, or Michael. So, he's not a bad guy, as we think. But he rep what he represents, not super great. So empty crown, Southern went down the stairs into his cells, his boots echoing off the flagstones. There he lay in the days of the old empire. With a creak, Southern swung open the door, revealing the pitiful form of Mikhail, the false Tsar. His military uniform, dirty and torn, his jer he jerked his head towards to look at Southern as he entered, his eyes sunken and fearful, his face covered by a week's worth of scraggly beard. Southern's face screwed up in disgust, he sank. Had the soldiers not allowed him to wash? They were better than this. Mikhail Andrevich, do you know who I am? Mikhail nodded pathetically, Southern continued, I am sorry for the state of your conditions, I will arrange for this to be re re remedied, remedied, remedied. Fixed immediately. I, before we could get any further, the false are lurched from his bench to grovel his knees. Southern took an involuntary step back as he was assaulted by the reek of Mikhail's breath. Southern, Comrade Southern, I beg of you, I've been saying over and over, I was nothing more than a pawn of the hardliners. Comrade Southern, please, I beg you, you must believe me. Suddenly, though, he floundered forward, grabbing Southern's legs as he began to noisily weep, tears and snot running down his face. Comrade Southern, I only wish to go home. Please have mercy. I love Russia and her people along with the socialist revolution. I beg you, Comrade, allow me to return home. I will never trouble you again. 
Self and stare down at the false czar, his face contorted with a mixture of pity and disgust. It was true in part. Mikhail had been a pawn of the rightists, but he had also he didn't come to Russia, you know, willingly and claim his fallacious birthright. Didn't he do that? Though he deserved the labor camps, perhaps it would be simply kinder to let the past be the past and put him on a ship bound for Australia, the distant land across the waves where an exiled prince could find a home. Exact justice have pity. We're gonna have pity. Because, you know, that's the way we do things here. And we shall have the East silenced. It was a difficult and bloody time, but uh, we have finally exercised a two more of fascism and collaborationism from the Far East. The remnants of the monarchists and feuding cliques of the Russian fascist party have fled to like the ruins abroad, and the people can once again breathe easy. We cannot rest, however. The hard work of bringing these new territories into the fold is sorely ours to perform. Extending the social programs into these areas will likely be popular, but we cannot predict how the people, unused to true so socialism, after so many years of tyranny, will respond to their newfound freedom. Ensuring that we stay on the good side as we begin our reforms is a must. Good. Alright, so getting your divisions up. Oh, yeah, they begin attacking me. I see. Oh, yeah, that's it's, it's not a good place to be attacked from. So many different areas that we get hit from. Three different divisions. They are attacking over river, and it looks like we might be in mountains, and we are entrenched, maybe? So that's actually not too bad, but it looks like we're still suffering some casualties here. Uh, kill it. People are killing each other, so be it. Okay, you got to move faster than this. I mean, this is ridiculous. I know it's Siberia, but come on. The Lord's word for all to hear. In the ancient days of time since past, it was thought that Emmanuel was lowly and forsaken that were given the arm that should rise above the oppression of tyranny, violence, and sin. Christ's own crucifixion served as the end of his mortal service on earth. However, a new vessel of the Lord walks among the meek and lowly, preparing to spread his word across all corners of the frozen world. It shall be the day of reckoning for every barbarian, tyrant, and cultist as the Father journeys toward to bring the light of God to the fiendish wastes. And so greatly did the Father take up the podium of God, speaking out to, to the select few beside him, but with a voice heard around the taigas. Brothers and sisters of this bright world, is it not we who bring forward the promises of God from the scriptures into the world? Yes, it is true. Our home of Russia has come under the despair of bandits, dictators, and marauders. But know this, brothers and sisters, as it says in the scriptures, whoever oppresses the poor to increase his own wealth or gives to the rich, he will only come to poverty. It is thus our duty to rise above the choking grass of these tyrannical madmen. For the mighty Lord seeks for justice to rise in the broken world, and we must be the first to deliver of judgment in his name. From the hill of Oman do we pray for all named Russian. It was from this that the, rush, the Father's revelation came clear. No man of the pirate nor persecutor could seek to overturn the might of the Lord. The followers of heaven thus marched on, rising above the chains of enslavement and oppression. However, while such men and women fought and killed for their freedom, the Father whispered softened words. But I tell you, love your enemies. Blessed are those who curse you. Do good to them who hate you. And pray for those who mistreat you and persecute you. It is heaven's hymns that we sing. Cool. We, we get more war support, even though we get peasants uprisings, which really sucks. Okay, well, we lost war support. God dang it. Come on, core the area. I want it's better if it's a core under us. I don't want to use uh, last stand here. I really don't want to use last stand if I have to. Okay, it's lagging again. Okay, there we go. Cool. Mm hmm. Okay, cool. At least they're killing each other now. Do that. We have to do that. I don't want to use this. I just don't want to. Did I tell you to move, son? You gotta move. Now we're winning the battle, but it's costing us men and equipment, stuff that we just really don't have. Ah, uh, but we're getting more equipment now. Okay, good. We got the two divisions there. They want to walk in. Yeah, I don't think so, son. And they attack us once again. Great. Let them weaken themselves on our line. Right, we've got that division coming up as well. Good. Oh, shnikes. Shnikerinos. Hold on, boy. Hold on. We probably lost quite a few guys. A thousand versus a thousand. That makes sense, you know. Was it you that was moving? Yeah. Go and retreat. You'll be fine. Good lord, this is not good. Oh, crap. They declared war on us, too? Wait, who did? Divine Mandate. Well, I guess we'll end that episode here, then. Hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you all tomorrow, as we're going to try some black magic to try to save the revolution. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.